And I wanna, uh, I've been recruiting for 13 years, and something Stephanie said there uh, that you kind of probably glaze over it said, you put it in your resume, make sure that, that it's accurate. Yeah. And that's kind of a given you think, okay, I'm not gonna put something in there if it's, if it's fake. When I was in high school, I took French class, and I was okay, nothing good. When I went to college, my degree was in international studies, and I was forced to take foreign language, so I was going to take French. Makes sense. I was terrible at, at French, but I had two sweet mates who were from Quebec. That helped a lot. You know, when you had to translate, that, that helped a lot. And I'm going to admit, I had a lot of help on that. The point of the story is that when I did my first resume, somehow I thought it was a great idea to put that I was fluent in French. <laughs> if you know any ninth graders right now that have taken a semester of French, they knew more at that time than I did when I had graduated college. Not that big of a deal until I fill out an application and turn in my resume, and they call me, look me in the eye, and said, great, you're fluent in French. You need to speak to Bruce. He's been in Paris the last six years. You guys would get along great. It got me thinking right then, if, if you've got it, put it in your resume. If you doubt it, don't, don't chance it. We see it all the time. It's a, it's a big, big deal. So if you feel like you've got the working experience or you've studied it and you know it, but if you floated through it and it's not something you have a grasp of, don't put it in the in the resume. I thought that was a, a really good point of what she, she said about that. Mike, I was just going to add on to that. Everything that we're talking about, some of it seems so elementary that we probably think you're scratching your head, but yet so many of the people that we have as senior professionals go into interviews, go into resume writing, and they just bomb. Like, they just do things that are so wrong. So we don't want to present anything and think, oh, why are they just presenting this? We see these mistakes all the time. It's you, you, you will have some, many of you said you have resumes. Many of your resumes, as far as the format of what it looks like, and if you do what Stephanie just said right there, will be better than some of the biggest leaders in this town. Yeah. No doubt about it. Some of the people that have just started out in their career have unbelievable resumes. Some of the people that are at senior VP levels that are making just an absolute insane amount of money, when you see their resume, you're just going, how did, this, how did this happen? How did this, there's no way. Like we have stuff where we'll have Shakespearean quotes going along the side. We have art stuff that when it prints, you get all these funky graphics. Keep it simple. I mean, really everything that Stephanie said right there is, is to the point. And um, I'm a big believer. You, you don't need a good resume. You need a great resume. And there's a big difference. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. What I'm going to talk about is, is really a little bit of, of kind of some strategies behind the search process. Okay, got my degree, got my resume. Now what, what am I doing now? How do I go about this? Obviously, you've got some internship options and different things. And I also want to apologize because I have to read my notes a lot more. We, when we started this about 10 years ago, this is before you even really turn on the computer almost. I mean, my my part of this presentation has evolved and changed every year. This is a different presentation on this strategy than it was two years ago, and two years from now, it'll be even different. Yeah. So uh, I apologize for that. None of you guys can relate to this. Well, let me see how I've got to get to mine. This is what it was like when I was when I was there. You know, when I'm looking for a job, none of you can relate to this. This, this is what it used to look like, OK? Um, Probably not a good representation. He hasn't shaved in a while. He's on the couch. He's in his, in his robe on the phone. But that's what it was. It's looking for a one ad in the paper, um, about maybe three or four lines. That's what, it was, that's what it was like. That's how we saw you know, what was going on in the market. We looked for a job. It's got a phone number in there. We call him up. That's the way we used to do it. Now we've progressed. Now we've kind of moved from the couch maybe to the bed a little bit. We're, we're kind of we're getting on the laptop now. Uh, we're able to look at things. It's kind of changed. It's really changed a lot in the uh, in, in the last few years. But really, the first picture was really before any pre pre networking, pre you know social media, anything. That was definitely old school. Now we've progressed here. You know, uh, 1999 to what I say is about 2012. Does anybody know what happened in 1999? Can anybody guess what was created there? 
monster career builder. You know, it's really when the internet sites came on, the job sites, and it, and it changed everything. But basically what we did with those sites, are you familiar with those, those sites? I mean, they're not as prevalent as they were a few years ago, really since 2012 in my opinion, but that was kind of the thing to do. You put your resume out there on Monster, Career Builder, you know, you post the jobs. But we always used to kid people because really what you're doing is you're applying to an online ad, you know, the same as the newspaper, but now it's just internet based. The difference is it changed the geography of it because when I'm the guy on the couch looking, I'm looking in the local paper, maybe a trade publication, and I'm looking at this amount of data. Now we've moved here and it's internet based, so you're seeing full job descriptions online. Okay, you're, you're looking at things all over the country. I would imagine that a lot of you will work in Northwest Arkansas, but a lot of you during your job search are gonna be looking all over the country and all over the world. You couldn't do that 20 years ago. There's just no way to, to do it because we didn't have the same type of networking and the options that, that we have now. Um, so it's really changed the, the, the landscape. And you, you're really not limited like, like we used to be. And you have more tools now than we've ever had. So I want to just kind of give you a few tips to, to maybe help you use some of those, those tools. Um, for some of you right now, if you're applying or will be applying online, this is, this is kind of what your game plan is, I bet. You're going to be sitting in the PJs, you're going to be applying to stuff online, and then you're going to go, man, I don't know what happened, what's the deal? Nobody likes me. I'm not hearing anything. I'm getting these Dear John letters. You know, no, why, why won't they even? I've got a great resume. I've got to look at me. I've got you know, a master's. How do they not like me? What's the, what's the scoop? And there's an art to it. It's a little bit more of a strategy now. So I would say even since 2012, this is now a little bit gone. So we're not just putting our resume online. We're not just applying to things. There's a little bit more of a strategy uh, behind it. And I say 2012 because that's when more of the aggregators came through. We're looking at more, if you've heard of these, Indeed, Simply Hired. The companies like that that bring it all together in addition to the company websites. Um, what I see with this is really a lot of disappointment. I will have people at executive levels that will call me and go, man, I am on a, a, a brutal job search. I am looking for the right job. I'm pretty aggressive right now. When you ask them what that is, I'm in my PJs. I spend every night from 10 to 12 and I look for jobs and I send my resume that. That happens. I can't say that people don't get hired that way, but what I want to do today is kind of give you kind of the new job search, a little bit more of a strategy behind it. I realize that some of you guys are a year or more away. I realize that some are, are ready to go with this, and I realize that by the time I finish this today, the whole strategy might even change because technology is changing more quickly. Uh, when Stephanie said something about, we don't read down to eight lines, we don't. You know how many lines you read? You read 140 characters. You're, you're Twitter people. You're, that's, that's kind of the way it's changed. So it's really more now, it's impactful. No, you don't have time. You guys probably, even when you're reading books, anything, you scan and move on. You go through it quickly. And that's why another reason why the strategies, the strategies are so important. She so asked you about resumes. How many of you are on LinkedIn? Not just signed up, but I mean, you've got some stuff on there. <laughs> I mean, not just student, but you've got some, some stuff. How many of you are on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Twitter? Snapchat? Okay. I'm not going to talk about it. We can talk for days about it. Recruiters, hiring managers, they look at all of it. So one change that we've made 10 years ago, part of my speech was, Okay, now this is going to be your um, personal side. This is going to be your business side. It's not like that anymore. There's rarely a person that I don't talk that I that I talk to that you know that we don't get into that. Hey, make sure your Facebook's good. You know, make sure it's it's buttoned up. Make sure your LinkedIn profile is good. Make sure it's accurate. Uh, the main website that I'm going to reference today is really LinkedIn. It's the most valuable tool um, that you can have. I think right now, uh, and we could talk about it for hours, but it is your LinkedIn profile right now is every bit as important as your uh, as your resume. If you, if you come across anyone who hands you a business card, that's what we do. 
It's what we used to do. It used to be the big thing. We meet each other, we exchange business cards. LinkedIn's your business card now. We're going to get to that long before we get to this, this part of it. So make sure that you're, you're buttoned up on that. When a job is posted online, there can be up to 200 candidates applying for each position. Out of those 200, the majority of those people will, will apply to that job within the first three minutes that the job is posted. Um, over 50% I, I, over of those people that apply to that job will not have one of the basic criteria to qualify for that role. Now that sounds kind of crazy, why would they do it? We see it all the time. We've got things posted on our website. About 11 o'clock, my phone's blowing up. Here's Joe Blow, he's applied for 12 different jobs. Boom, 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 boom. That's the same, the same old strategy. So you can see that with the percentages that I'm talking about, your chances of going at it old school by sitting in your PJs and just applying to a job, your chances go down. I don't say, I'm not saying that people don't hire like that, but you want to increase your odds. You want to go at it in a little bit of a different way. So I'm trying to get you to think a little bit differently, a little bit more of marketing yourself. I'm going to tell you a couple of tricks here, to tricks that recruiters use. I want to tell you a couple of things that you can do differently to maybe market yourself and find that job. Oops. I think we're out of whack here on that. Yeah, we've got one of my slides missing. It's okay. Got to be able to improvise. So, first of all, I'll just tell you, know your skills. And when I say your skills, what, what, what are you good at? What do you think, you know, Stephanie hit on that a little bit. What's different? What makes you different than the other 200 people that want the same job? What I'm trying to get you to think of is that when you apply online to one job, it is extremely transactional. I'm the guy, you got the job. What you, I mean, I've got to be perfect for that. Look, I can, I can do that job. I'm trying to get you to think of it, it's, it's competition. It's, you've got to think of what is the competition doing? It's not so much of can I do the job, how do I look with my resume, with my LinkedIn profile, with my social media, compared to the other 200 people that want the same thing? When 200 people apply for a job, there's not a recruiter, a hiring manager, a vice president of sales, anyone in the country that has time to go through 200 resumes. My industry average is the same as what Stephanie said. It's probably going to be 6 to 15 seconds. That's what they're going to spend on. So you don't get to page 2 usually on that. You've got to get them quickly. Um, so you want to get, you know, know for yourself what is your area of expertise? What is unique about yourself that sets you apart? I used to give people a card at the start of this and say, okay, Write down your, what your skill set is. What do you think you're really good at? That's tough. You ever had to give an elevator speech? Describe yourself in 30 seconds. What would you do? Uh, I like football. <laughs> what would you do? That's what you've got to be able to identify. It's not just that I have my degree, but where am I, in, where am I intern? What skills have I picked up? What are my... What are my things that are unique about me? Maybe it could be computer applications. It could be bilingual. What are the things that are different? Mike, also, can we just add in that too? Like things that you do, uh, which is interesting. It's not always a huge criteria, but things that, um, as far as sports that you participated in, or if you're a world traveler, if you've done different volunteer work, some of those things really resonate with people. And so you want to know how you resonate with other people. So yeah. actually having something outside just pure business, not it, it's not the whole part of your resume, but a line about that, that calls that out. Like if you've done marathons or you're a triathlete, like those kinds of things send a message to us that you're a disciplined person or you know that you're you take on a, other tasks, you do volunteer work. Those are important to make sure that that's very, very important, especially starting out too. And you never know what's going to get attention. Right. Either. You know, um, 10 years ago we had someone that played on one of the mini tours, on the golf mini tours. Caught my attention right off the bat. I would have talked to him forever. He didn't have qualifications for one job ever. But I talked to this guy. I finally looked him up and he didn't really have a good career in golf. 
but, but, <laughs> but he did have that connection. There was, there was something there. I spoke to someone this morning, and I like to use examples because I, I think they're easy to relate to. I spoke to someone this morning that graduated from Duke. And about two times a year, I talk to someone who graduates from Duke. Guess what we talk about? Better Better believe it. <laughs> Better believe it. Well, does it actually get them a job, though? No. <laughs> but you know what? It starts the conversation. Right, yeah. And if you start the conversation, you've got a shot at getting the job. And when you've got 200 people you're going against, the truth of the matter is, hiring managers are looking for ways to get rid of 150 of those so they can focus on the talent. And what waters it down is that when you go in there and you've got your MBA and you've done everything that you could do to, to have everything right and make you a, a good candidate, the guy at Taco Bell, he's got his resume in there too. It gets, it gets muddied. So we look for ways to set ourselves apart. Look for ways to set ourselves apart, not only for one particular job, but how do we do it for the competition? What's different and unique about us? Um, doesn't really necessarily relate here, but there's a, there's a saying, if you've ever heard it, it says sales is sales. A widget's a widget. And that if I can sell this product, I can sell anything. Companies usually don't. That's not what they do. Companies are looking to hire people with an, a, an area of expertise, you know, and that may be engineering, it may be finance, it may be, you know, human resources, but they're looking for the, the thing that you specialize in. If you make everything generic, you're going in the wrong path. That's why it's so important to be able to identify your skills. A guy from Chicago called me last week, he said, I'm sales and marketing. And I said, well, I'm working on some different things. He said, well, uh, I can do that. He goes, I've got finance too. He goes, I'm sales, marketing, and finance. And I said, no, you're not. I said, no, you're not. I said, what's, what, what's your gig? What's your thing? He goes, well, I'm sales, and marketing, I can do finance. Companies don't hire that way. We, you don't want to get to a situation where you are a jack of all trades. Then you go back to me, the guy who is, thinks he's an expert in French. You know, I'm do, I think I can do it all. Narrow your scope down a little bit on your skill set and, and identify it. Research companies, not jobs, at least at the beginning. What companies employ people with your skill set? Anybody here accounting? Anybody here finance? Anybody here finance? Go on LinkedIn, reverse search, put in finance. What people are coming up in LinkedIn? You're going to find a ton of companies out there, companies you've never heard of. And the way most people go about it is they think of the big companies only. They think that's a good place to work, which I'm not saying it's not, but they lose out on opportunities. You don't want to be so narrow in your focus that you lose some opportunities out there. There's some great companies out there that, that none of us have ever heard of. And in addition to LinkedIn too, you know, LinkedIn's really what I'm talking about the most, but if you uh, research on Yahoo Finance, publicly traded company, you can get a lot of information there. Ubers, you need a lot of information on companies on Facebook. So there are a lot of places to, uh, to do that. Do you know anyone at the company that's currently working there or has worked at the company before? It's not too early for you to start researching that. Some companies, what about some people who have left this program? Where have they gone? Some that have maybe your same either skill set, maybe your same education. Some of your friends. Have you done a reverse search on LinkedIn to see who you went to high school with? Who you went to college with? I graduated from Texas State University. It's in San Marcos, Texas. Connected with a buyer at Walmart for that reason. Just that we had that in common. It certainly was easy to say, hey, it's good to see a fellow Bobcat in Northwest Arkansas. It opened the door. You never know. But use those connections there and make sure that you're doing the research on the company and find those companies that might be of interest to you that you just don't know about. Can you see yourself working with the company? When you're researching companies, if you don't see yourself working there, you don't think it's a place you want to go, move on. Learn about it, but don't spend a, a lot of time with it. Try to find out about company cultures. Find out about the inner workings of a company. 
do as much research <coughs> on the company as, it, as you can. Consider your research as part of continuing education. If nothing else, you're going to learn about different industries, different jobs. You're going to be at parties and be able to talk about stuff that you didn't talk about before. It's the same thing as being you know, well-read. It's just being well-versed in the job market and knowing. If someone says uh, you know, something about Tyson, you know, something about Walmart, and you can talk about that and you, and you know something about the, the company, it just makes you that much smarter. Because you don't, you don't want to think of this as, what's that job right out of college? I'm trying to get you to think outside the box. I'm trying to get you to think of something different. I'm trying to think of it as a career. The things I hope to tell you today are kind of things like your mom and dad tell you. It doesn't kick in for another 20 years. You know, but then you'll go, hey, that guy that, you know, 20 years ago, that made sense. You know, it doesn't make sense right now, especially if you're, you're away. But I'm telling you, these little things in the research can be crucial. Who reads Glass Door? Who's been on there? Don't read it. It's all I can say. Don't read it. It's a gripe fest. If you go on there right now, <coughs> on Glass Door, there's a job posted for Northwest Arkansas with a very good company. Very good, very good company. If you look at the comments, the first comment says, great place to work if you have no ambition, never want to advance, and don't like money. Now that turns me off right there because I didn't pump me up to go work at this place. That's a good company. The thing Glassdoor doesn't do is it doesn't differentiate between satellite offices, locations, that sort of thing. That was written by a plant employee in Dallas, Texas. It has nothing to do with this local company here. And so since it doesn't take that into consideration, you can have companies that you have heard terrible things about, but they're great companies here. We work with companies that have awesome local offices. I wouldn't work for all the money in the world at their corporate office. So don't use Glassdoor to make your decision. I'm not saying it can't be useful, but don't let it sway you. It can be a way that when you're interviewing that you have some understanding of being able to ask some questions to them about the culture. Because I think understanding the culture of a company is important. But just like what Mike is saying, to know that it's either a disgruntled employee, because most people who go on are not happy. You don't get people who are really happy writing, you know, oh, I love this. It's such a great place to work. They don't de generally do it. It's usually the person that's upset. And quite often there's management changes. There's all kinds of policies and things that are going on. We have, like, we just get the background of it, and so not understanding the full context of what has happened, why it's happened, that really does give a limited experience for you as far as the company is concerned. But it will give you opportunity to talk about that in an interview. Like, I would bring up and say, you know what? I noticed this. I noticed this, and, and then that even shows that you've done your research on the company and that you're thoughtful about what you're wanting to join. So. You probably bought something recently online and you get a survey afterwards. And if you're like me, you probably delete it. But if I was ticked off, I'd fill, I'd fill it out. And that's what <laughs> happens with Glassdoor. That's where the, the attention goes. Next, utilize your network. Your network is all the people you know, all the people you want to know. It's LinkedIn, it's Facebook, it's Twitter, it's all of it. But it's not all online. <clears throat> Do you know anyone currently doing a job similar to you, to what you want to do? Is there anybody in that network that maybe is on Facebook? Now again, this is where this is so different. I would have never even said the word Facebook 10 years ago. But now we're having this merge of, of personal and business. You know, all the companies have sites on there, have uh, Facebook pages now too. Is there anybody that you know through your Facebook community that, or network that has worked at these companies? Ask for advice. Don't ask for a job. People love to help. They love to help, and they will help. But don't ask for a job when it's time. Take them to coffee, take them to lunch, say, hey, would you review my resume? I'm starting my career. I love what you do. I want to do that in 10 years. Can you tell me what path I need to get on? They love to help. Someone comes and asks for a job, ah, nobody's got time for that. I don't think there's a thousand people want jobs. I, don't have, I can't do that. But I want to help you in your career. That's what people will do. Get a mentor. I always say when you take some, when you, you know, take them out to lunch, 
But when you take them out to lunch, take them someplace populated. Take them someplace that's just packed. Because if they're connected, they're going to know someone in there. And that's where you increase your network. You meet more and more people. A lot of, a lot of what we do and what you're going to see through your career is, is what Denise said. It's timing. It's being in the right place at the right time, knowing the right people. And when you have that opportunity, it's then having the resume and the background and the education to take it to the next level. Network in person. Even though I talk about LinkedIn, Facebook, all of it, nothing will beat in-person contact. It, it, it never will. If I can talk about a candidate in Bentonville, Arkansas, as opposed to one in New York, about a Bentonville job, it changes everything about metal. Meet people, get out of your comfort zone. If you are in your PJs applying online, if you're staying up all night on LinkedIn trying to connect with people that have your degree, you gotta take it to the next level. They will help, people will help you. Connect with a recruiter who specializes in your, in your industry because we can help each other. Don't do it until you have marketable experience. Okay? Get that experience, get those contacts, and then connect with the recruiter. There are recruiters that, that specialize in everything engineering, finance, accounting, pharmaceuticals, everything you want. And, the, and it can be a lifelong career relationship that, that can help, especially if it's a two-way street. But find one, because I think they can give you some insights. What we do, you know, in the, in the CPG world. Now you've created your network. You've got everything buttoned up as far as your resume. All the buttons are, are the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. Now it's time to selectively apply. Would you hire you? You really have to ask that. Would you? Am I ready to go? If I'm on the job market, I don't have pages uh, on my Facebook page. I don't have any me doing any cake stands or anything. We've had that happen. We've had that happen. We've had people that were doing things that they probably shouldn't post on Facebook when they're in the job market. I'll repeat, there is not a recruiter or hiring manager that is not looking at your Facebook and uh, your LinkedIn profile. Athletes, you see what's happening there, okay? They're getting in trouble for things that are happening completely off the field and off the court about what's happening in, in social media. Your residents. Do your resume and LinkedIn match up? And do they match the criteria that you're looking at? Does that make sense? So if the job description says we are looking for someone who has an engineering background, who has a, a, a you know a, a, a master's, who you know has, has these software applications, if you don't have any of that, move on. There'll be something for you. That's why it's so important to identify your skills so you know how to search. John Doe is better than info. I put that in there to really kind of remind me. When you find something, when do that LinkedIn search, when you're doing the reverse search and you're looking for the people that you went to school with that are now working at Tyson, if you can send a resume or contact them directly, you're better off than sending it through the website. Companies don't like to hear that, but there are a lot of companies in town here that if you send your resume in to careers at company.com, it's going to Tallahassee, it's going to Cleveland, it's going to Los Angeles. And what that person is doing in that office is they're going, oh, he does not have three years of experience. He has two and a half. And they mark you off. So much easier to do that reverse lookup on LinkedIn, find someone you know, see if they can walk your resume down the hall. See if they know the hiring manager. See if they know someone in human resources. Use your contacts, but remember a direct letter, direct email to an individual will always be better than doing the thing, you know, online, applying to, to career builder, indeed, and all that stuff. It's just going generic info, uh, email addresses. Know and document where you apply, who you contact, and the results you get. You don't want your resume just going everywhere, know what you're know where it's going. 
for those of you who have a resume together, if I were to say, hey, who's got your resume? You should be able to know like that. If, if someone calls us and we ask that question, who has your resume? You go, well, I've applied a lot online. And what do we think? What does a hiring manager think? You're that girl that was, you know, in bed on the inner PJs at night, just shooting off resumes. You went, set yourself apart. You've got the education. You've worked hard for your education. Be smart in your in your job search. And then think of it from the company's perspective. Would they hire you? Why would they hire you over the other 200 people? And don't take it personally. I, I use, and the last thing I'll say is using an analogy here, a little bit of a, a sports analogy. There are a lot of football players in the country that want to play football here. And there are a lot of them that are good enough to play here that will never get the chance. The reason being, it's not that they're not good. We just may not need any more quarterbacks. We may not need any more wide receivers. It's the same thing in the job market. What you specialize in, they may not need that right then. That doesn't mean that your resume is bad. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. Don't take it personally. Use it to continue your education. Don't burn any bridges. That same company that turns you down can be begging for you three years later. Make it a full experience that you gain something from, that you learn something from. Don't take it personally and you'll be successful.